I'm Ren, and welcome back to my Bellerophon Alice cosplay tutorial. Today, we'll be making his lower body, which includes his boots, shins, knees, thighs, skirt, and belt. I did get a tripod for this one, but I apologize in advance. My camera angles suck, and I'm still getting used to filming my process in general, so bear with me as I learn. This process is going to involve a lot of sewing. So make sure you're well acquainted with your sewing machine and your stretch applique settings. I'll also be showing you a handy hand stitch for near invisible attachments. So without further ado, let's get started. To start out, I bought a pair of silver boots. These are Ellie boots in style 106, a Venge engineer, but you can use whatever you like. I recommend using a pair you can pull on without unzipping as it makes getting dressed easier. But if you have to unzip them, you can always make your shin armor a little loose to get your hand down in there. We're starting with the blue foot details, so grab some masking tape and tape up the heels of the boots. You can lay some saran wrap on the boot before the tape to make it easier to remove, but it's not necessary. Once you have it adequately taped, draw out your heel, peel it off, and cut it out. I stick mine to some cardstock so I have a sturdy pattern. Repeat this step for the diamond on the front of the shoes as well. The last thing you'll need the tape for is the blue section around the ankle. I taped it halfway around the boot that I had stuffed with paper and sketched the width I wanted and the angled shapes. In the end, your pattern should look roughly like this. The boots also have wing details on the outer ankles, so dig out the wing pattern you made for your tiara last time. It'll work perfectly for this. Then it's time to transfer it all to foam. When you trace your ankle pieces, make sure to either draw them on a fold or flip and add it like I do in this video to get the full length. Once they're cut out, your pieces should look like this when temporarily attached to the boot. The next step is to cover these pieces in the corresponding colors of fabric. There are a couple of techniques for this. The first is kind of like sewing a pouch, and the second is like a tube. To make the pouch one, which we will be using for most of our pieces, you trace your foam exactly on the wrong side of the fabric, leaving little to no seam allowance. This only works when you're using a stretch material, so if your fabric doesn't stretch, you will need seam allowance. Once you've traced your pieces, you take them to the machine and sew directly on top of your traced lines all the way around, leaving no openings. Cut out your pieces and clip your curves. Very carefully use a pin to separate the two layers of fabric that are sewn together just enough to be able to cut a slit in only one of the layers and not the other. Using this new opening, turn your pieces right side out. Then you just stuff your foam in there and make it lie nicely. Do this for your heels, toe diamonds, and wings. For the ankle rings, you will be sewing them like a tube. Basically, you trace your foam and sew the long sides leaving the two shorter ends open. Turn your tube and shove your foam through. Once the foam is inside, you sew up the short ends creating a seam. Your pieces will look like this. The next thing we're going to do is add some details to the ankle wings. Start by tracing your design onto the wings with some chalk or water soluble marking pen. Then take it over to your machine and sew on top of your lines in a matching thread. As so long as you're using a thin foam like 2mm or a stiff interfacing, most machines should be able to handle this with ease. After all your pieces are sewn, stuffed, and detailed, all that's left is to glue them in place. Super glue will work fine for this since it bonds well to the cheap plastic vinyl of my boots. And just like that, we can move on to the shins. To start our shins, we need to put on our boots and measure the dimensions we will need. 
measure how tall our shin will be, the circumference of the upper calf or the top of the shin, and the circumference of our ankle, the bottom of the shin. Transfer those measurements to either some pattern paper or, in my case, directly to the foam. I usually make one foam piece and then trace it if I have to make a match. If you're not as small as me and need a larger piece of foam for your pieces, I find it still pretty sturdy if you duct tape more foam together to get the size you need. I even do so later on when making my skirt. Once you have both your base shins cut out, it's time to make room for those blue ovals on the sides. I fold one of my foam shins in half and sketch out the shape I want, then carefully cut out the oval. If you cut it out nice enough, you can reuse that piece for the actual blue part, so take your time. Trace the hole you made onto the other half of your shin so there are two symmetrical holes. Then, trace and cut your other shin to match. The next thing we're going to do is cover the ovals we cut out of our shins in blue fabric. The back of these will not be visible at all, so rather than waste material making pouches, I'm just going to cut a piece of fabric slightly larger than my foam and hot glue the excess to the back of the piece. Now that you have your blue ovals, it's time to cover your shins. This part is kind of tricky. We will be using a combo of the tube method of covering and the hot glue method we just used. Trace your shin onto the wrong side of your shin fabric. I'm using a silver blue for this part because I don't want the whole outfit to be one color. We want some contrast, some pizzazz, so I have both a plain silver and my silver blue. Cut out two shin pieces per foam piece with excess seam allowance where the seam of the shin will be. If there's a portion that's just fabric instead of fabric and foam at the seam, it gives you a bit of leeway with the stretch and it makes it easier to put on. Take one of your shin pieces and lay your foam on it. Trace inside the holes of your foam and then kind of loosely cut inside it, leaving enough left over to fold over onto the inside. Then glue around the holes so that you have a nice edge. Don't glue your fabric anywhere else. Next, we're going to attach our blue pieces to the fabric covered foam. Place your pieces inside the holes and from the back, tape them in place. This technically is all you have to do, but for more stability and longevity, I'm going to hand sew them in place. Using the ladder stitch, or an invisible stitch shown here, sew all the way around each blue piece so that they're solidly bonded. To do this stitch, you kind of sew through the silver for one stitch, then go to the blue and sew one stitch, and then back to the silver, kind of like when you lace a shoe. Then you pull your stitches tight and they disappear. I'm probably not the best teacher for this, but look up ladder stitch and you can probably find how to do it. Next, place the right sides of your fabric foam and your plain fabric piece together and sew along the top and bottom edge to make your tube. Carefully turn it out and you should have something that looks like this. Now you just have to sew up your back seams and you have your shins. To start off the knees, I took a piece of paper roughly the size of the piece I was going to make, measured my knee, and cut it to a rectangle matching the biggest dimensions. Then I folded it in half, sketched the shape I wanted, and cut it out on the fold to be symmetrical. The rest is easy peasy. You just transfer it to the foam twice and cover both pieces with the silver blue fabric. For the thighs, I measure just above my knee, my upper thigh, and the length I want the piece to be. Then, I simply transfer those dimensions onto my foam. I cut mine on a fold for more accuracy, and then trim along the top to give it a more dynamic shape.
After that, I covered my thigh plates in the plain silver fabric so the knee plate will stand out a little more. Then I just seam them up the back and turn them out. Once your thighs are covered and seamed up, pin your knees onto the thighs so that a little less than half the height hangs off the bottom. Then, just invisible stitch the part that lays on the thigh to your other piece. But, don't actually do this yet. Let me explain. Here we come to another classic Ren mistake. At the time I was making the thighs, I was starting to come down with a bad case of influenza biggie, but didn't know it yet. I was taking meds and using caffeine to power through and carelessly forgot an important detail. I really thought I was done. Until... I looked closer at my rough photos and saw this. <sighs> so, I very frustratedly set to work on making the decorations that would have been so much easier had I done them before I put on the knees. I make a paper pattern that's slightly taller than my thigh pattern, and add a little cutout on the front edge that will line up with the center of the knee plate. This is where I could stop if I did this before attaching my knee. But since I didn't want to redo anything because I was sick, I cut out my foam pieces, then laid them onto my thighs and traced on one side where the edge of the knee plate was and cut it out so that it'd match perfectly. Then I covered my decorations like normal, pinned them around the outer side of the thigh, lined up my edge with the edge of the knee, and invisible stitched them in place. Now, excusing the continuity error, Use some of your scrap silver to make a couple form-fitting tubes for your knees that'll reach from your thigh down into your boot. This makes the whole leg look more cohesive and prevents your leggings from showing through any gap. Sew the top of these tubes to the thigh. Next, make a couple of foam straps that'll loosely go around the back of your knee and cover them in blue. Sew a detail line through the center of each one and then attach them to the sides of the knees. With all that out of the way, your thighs are done and we're on to the big guy, the skirt. In all honesty, I was the most sick while making this, so it's mostly pictures and barely any video. But to start out, I measured my hips and about how long I wanted my skirt to be, which turned out to be exactly two sheets of foam taped together for me, so yay, lucky! I then marked out the little curve it has in the front and the rectangle bits of blue that are on the sides and cut them out of both pieces. Then it's back to the usual. I covered it in my silvery blue fabric. His skirt is made out of multiple strips of metal with a solid trim, so I marked out the strips of chalk on my covered skirt and then detail sewed them down. After that, it was time for the trim. To start out, I taped a bunch of strips of foam together in a rough U shape that would go around the skirt with a little overlap underneath. Then, I traced my skirt's outline onto it and then made an even trim all the way around. Because this piece wound up being so damn massive, I didn't have enough of my stretchy blue to do this. I did, however, have some leftover matching blue fabric from when I cosplayed the artist Diakai's Amazing Demon Albrecht. It's a really fragile fabric, so this was kind of a pain, but I traced it onto that with plenty of seam allowance. That still wound up not being enough, and I had to patch it a lot, cut it out, and sewed it together. Once that was turned, I fed the trim piece through it, cleaned it up, and pinned it onto the skirt. Then it was just a few hours of using my invisible stitch to attach it. After that, I attached a silver elastic waistband to the top of my skirt and seamed it up in front. The final part is the belt. I might add some snaps to this later because it kind of just sits on my hips and tends to move around, but it does work fine the way it is. I took some heavy interfacing because if I'm going to add closures or snaps of any kind, I like to have something stronger to sew through than foam, and drew out a wide strip the length of my hip measurement. Then I sketched the shape of the front at the center and cut it out. After that, it was time to cover it with fabric and sew up the back seam. I left quite a bit of seam allowance without the interfacing because I wanted to be able to just pull this over my head instead of making a closure. This lets it be pretty stretchy but is also part of why it likes to move around so much. The last thing for this video is the little decorations on his belt. I cut out four diamonds, two for the middle piece, one large and one that fits inside, and then two matching diamonds for the outside part. 
Then I traced them onto fabric and made another frustrating mistake that had me almost throw my belt on the floor. I traced my outside diamonds onto my blue fabric that I was already not sure I had enough of for this project and sewed them before realizing they're gold. So I redid them, cut and turned all my pieces, stuffed them up, and then because I was so done, I super glued them to the belt. They're not really gonna be under any stress, so this is fine. The likelihood of them coming off is really slim, so let's just do it the easy way today. And at last, we're done with Bellerophon's lower half. Don't we look spiffy? Next time we'll be making his upper body, and his wings will probably be my final video. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing or following me on Instagram at Kakashi Copycat Bye bye!